so today morning one news came that this hindenburg uh, most of them would be knowing it that when they released a report on adani the stock price collapsed today morning they have told that they are going to release one another report on an indian company so we don't know which company they are going to release it but this time my expectation is that the impact will be less because uh, already they have gi given one report on adani and it fell a lot of controversies came that uh, uh, that they released report because of their profit like that uh, so another report we can expect any time but the impact will be less that's what my feeling is so even in our recommendations if you see that we have recommended two pharma companies so one sector which is looking uh, very positive in the current market condition is the pharma where many stocks are uh, touching new highs daily on daily basis so some of uh, actually we catch the pharma rally very early a couple of years back we catch the pharma uh, rally and many stocks which we bought we recommended which we are holding in pms has gone up by four times five times in the last two years some of the stocks like newland lab sidus life science sipla all has done very well and most of the stocks are at all time high we expect the rally to continue in coming days also overall pharma will outperform so that is why we have recommended two stocks this time lupin and afdc and pharma stocks you cannot categorize all the stocks into a single one there are various categories indian formulation companies are there us generic companies are there then there are cdmo companies like uh, newland lab uh, uh, so so api companies are there who are manufacturing raw materials for uh, uh, pharm pharmaceutical companies and like that uh, we have we have to categorize it into various parts and we have to buy the correct stocks cannot blindly buy all the stocks but overall as a pharma team will continue to do well and uh, what is surprising is that two years back we bought most of the stocks at a very low price now mutual funds many mutual funds are started buying it in the last three four months if you see they are buying heavily in pharma stocks even last month also uh, i saw many companies many mutual fund schemes they were buying uh, sidus life science at uh, 1200 rupees uh, like that we bought it around 400 500 range couple of years back so uh, on uh, coming to the presentation if you see that after a long gap global market have seen a good uh, volatility previously volatility used to be the norm of the stock market but in the last one year the volatility has been very less in our market the volatility there is no volatility in the last two years that one slide i will show it but after a long gap we have seen one volatility in our uh, in our market also mainly led by the uh, up and down in global markets so this time the main reason for that volatility is the uh, unwinding of yen carry trade uh, previously uh, in the last two decades i have heard that many times the market used to fall uh, immediately they will tell that the reason for the fall is uh, due to unwinding of yen carry trades it's a uh, yen carry trade is nothing that you borrow money in japan in yen currency because the interest rate is almost uh, zero there in the last uh, many years the interest rates they were maintaining as zero so you buy uh, you take debt in japan you are not going to pay any interest you bring back the money in dollars and then you will invest in various asset classes equities cryptocurrencies commodities you invest it and uh, whatever profit you get uh, you will make money because you are not uh, paying any interest on that so the only risk is the currency depreciation or appreciation suppose uh, japanese yen depreciates means you will get more profit because when you give back you have to give less but once japanese yen starts appreciating means then you may start losing money because you have to pay more for the same uh, dollar you are going to repay so uh, the and last month also i showed one slide that uh, in the last two years japanese currency has depreciated 50 percent uh, one of the world largest uh, trading currency uh, the impact we have to see it like that last time i showed one one uh, slide uh, telling that japanese currency has depreciated a lot uh, in the last two years the impact we have to see but just when it started appreciating and when boj bank of japan started hiking interest rates this yen carry trade started unwinding because if currency starts appreciating means they will they will lose heavily so in a panic they started unwinding it that led to fall in not only stock price 
but also in commodities even cryptocurrency bitcoin fell from 72000 dollars to 50000 dollars now again back to 60000 dollars and uh, i am hearing that many uh, that a lot of uh, yen carry trade money are, has also invested in uh, us real estate and uh, many real estate across the world so the yen money is uh, there uh, across asset classes not only in stock market and now uh, what we are hearing is that uh, uh, 50% of carry trade is already unwounded. Some reports say that it is 75% un, uh, of carry trade is uh, uh, unwounded. Like that they are telling, but no one knows the exact figure. The person who knows the exact figure, generally he don't release the report in public. So whatever report we are getting it, it varies. The, the amount involved, they are saying 2 trillion, 4 trillion, like that they, they are saying. But exactly we don't know. But it looks like that the yen carry trade unwinding is almost over because the currency has stabilized. Japan is a currency dollar versus yen that has stabilized and Bank of Japan also told that they are not going to hike interest rate in near term like that they have told. And that is why market has turned volatile and the second important thing is the Q1 results. And if you see the Q1 results uh, after many many quarters I am seeing that the Q1 results were very average and uh, most of the companies they, they, they posted a very average and subdued results. This is after many many quarters and overall next presentation I will show, show how much uh, Nifty companies uh, have shown growth in sales and uh, profitability. Uh, that detail I will show in next presentation. But uh, overall the Q1 results were very average. So uh, stock prices has run up a lot. So based on the uh, Q1 results we expect that some consolidation in market may happen. But sector wise and stock wise the price movement will be will continue in coming days. But overall market may see some consol consolidation. And US Fed is likely to cut rate in September. So that is the consensus now. Actually when the volatility came last week many started telling that you should uh, cut the rate immediately uh, out of uh, meeting cut they have to uh, do it to rescue the market like that many statements came but the market has stabilized but definitely in September meeting we are going to see the rate cut. Two reasons are there. One is that the unemployment uh, rate has started increasing. Second thing is that inflation has come down. Uh, so uh, most basically most probably US Fed will cut in September and uh, Parallelly, the other important thing happening is the geopolitical tension which is increasing uh, day by day. We are seeing that uh, uh, Israel uh, with all their surrounding neighbors they are fighting it day by day more countries are involved in it. Now Iran uh, they are telling that, that any time they may attack uh, Israel. We don't know whether they will do it or not but uh, geopolitical tensions are increasing it. Uh, one, one thing is that the US election is coming in the next three months. So basically they may try to keep the noise level very low so that uh, they did not impact the US election uh, and next uh, by November US elections are scheduled. And overall Nifty and Sensex are down by around 1% uh, Nifty 0.5 Sensex down by 1% mid cap is almost flat and small cap is 0.7% uh, it is down. From the high if you see means the Nifty crossed almost 25,000 one day it closed about 25,000. From there if you see almost 4% down from the peak Nifty and Sensex and mid cap also if you see means around 4 to 5% Nifty mid cap and small cap around 4% down from the peak now our market is. And this is the uh, reason for the sharp fall in the global asset classes. This is the Bank of Japan they have hiked the interest rate. If you see the interest rate, how they hide, uh, how much they have just 15 basis point, which is nothing but 0.15 percent, which is the very, very, very low. If you see that somebody because of hiking uh, interest rate, why should uh, uh, we have to repay the money by increasing the interest rate of 0.15 percent? The main reason is the currency. Currency appreciation and depreciation will be very steep because of even a small change in interest rate. Now the interest rate in Japan is 0.25, it is the highest level since 2008, almost 16 years back uh, the interest rate was 0.25 and then uh, in, during the interim period it was uh, almost 0, now they have hiked to 0.25, 0.1% uh, they hiked in the month of March, now uh, uh, 10 days back they hiked by 0.15%, so overall the interest rates are now 0.25%.
appreciating and uh, generally whenever the interest rate uh, goes up means immediate impact will be seen in currency uh, and uh, uh, that, that, that led to unwinding of yen carry trade. Even if you see in any country, suppose if India rupee is continuously depreci depreciating against dollar means what they will immediately do is the uh, RBI will immediately hike the interest rate. So whenever interest rate uh, hike then the, that will stem down the currency currency depreciation and this is the a Japan interest rate from 1973. So, from 1973 the interest rates were plotted and if you see that at the time interest rate almost 8 percent, 7 percent like that, only after 1989 it started coming down very sharply and for last many many years it is almost near to zero from uh, 1998 onwards, 1999 onwards, it almost zero. So during this phase only this yen carry trade is started globally. People will borrow money in Japan, then they will uh, invest in uh, the asset various asset classes. Also even Indian companies also borrowing, if you see companies like REC, PFC, they borrow lot of money from Japan because the interest rate is low, uh, but uh, the risk is the currency risks are there. If uh, yen appreciates means they will lose money. See, see in Japan the problem no, all are old age people, uh, aged population number one, the second one is the shrinking population, uh, there is no inflation in Japan. So uh, suppose if you have bought one soap uh, in, in 1999, 1990s in India, means Lux soap may have cost 6 rupees, 7 rupees like that, just I am tentatively telling, now it is 25, 30 rupees. Whereas if you see in Japan the price will be even now after 20, 30 years it is 6 only. Uh, because there is no inflation there. One reason is the aged population. Population are getting old and and old. Whenever the age becomes high means the consumption will come down. Second, population is shrinking there in Japan. Not only they got a huge amount. Yeah. See, even uh, this uh, Nikkei stock market, no. Most of the shares is held by Bank of Japan only through ETF. Uh, Bank of Japan is not buying their own share. <laughs> uh, so, to, now what they did is the two, two rate hike they did it, one rate hike 0.1% uh, uh, they did it in the month of March, now another 0.15. So, basically they hiked by 0.25% but the impact and you see the currency from 162 it went peak, it fell to uh, 142, 41 level it fell, almost uh, 15% uh, something currency has uh, appreciated because of the two hikes of interest rates. So that hike led to panic unwinding of uh, in carry trade because whenever currency starts appreciating means those who borrowed money in Japan they have to pay more money to return back. So that led to it. Now the yen has bounced back to 146-47 level. Most probably it will be stay in that range. If you see that in the last uh, uh, one and a half years, if you see that from uh, 130 to 160 depreciated, yen has depreciated against US dollar. If you see in the last two years, nearly from 110, it has gone to 160, almost 50 percent depreciation was there. So, all, all this currency depreciation led to more people borrowing money, money will move out of Japan and that led to further depreciation. Uh, at some point of time, it has to stop. So, that is why Bank of Japan, they intervened uh, because when uh, currency starts depreciating means uh, inflation will go up starts uh, depreciating means inflation will go up. So to reduce inflation they have hiked it. Now most probably this yen uh, carry trade that may settle that will be an uh, uh, that volatility is almost over now. The another important thing which has happened is the US recession fear that has come 10 days back. Uh, the main reason is that the weak jobs data, uh, one jobs data came exactly when market was falling due to this. Uh, uh, yen carry trade unwinding at that time one jobs data came which was very weak that led to fear that in US the recession may come back uh, and uh, 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 and that are, that also accentuated the selling in the US market. So one day Dow Jones fell by more than 1000 points because of this only. Uh, now US Fed in August meeting they have already told that they may cut rate in September most probably that will happen. But in between uh, everyone started expecting that uh, they should immediately cut rate, already Fed is behind the curve, 
they have the cut rate but i don't think they will cut the rate between two meetings because only in extraordinary situations only they will do it uh, in normal situation if they cut rate means what will happen it will send a wrong, wrong signal that something very seriously bad in economy that's why fed is cutting interest rate like that it will send a signal so uh, most probably they will cut in september only now there are three meetings are there in september one meeting is there november another meeting december three meetings are there in current calendar year market participants they are expecting around 100 to 125 basis point cut they are expecting so september 50 basis point cut will be there in a uh, november 25 december 25 or november another 50 and december 20, uh, 25 so overall 100 to 125 basis point rate cut will happen in the us and this is the unemployment data and this data spooked the uh, market last time when dow jones fell by 1000 points recently just a few trading session back it came to 4.3 previously it was around 3 3.8 like that 3.7 3.8 like that it was there we are seeing sharp last five months unemployment is continuously going up uh, basically the any central bank has two objectives what 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 is the main objective of a central bank in india we have rbi like that all countries they have central banks so main mandate given to the central bank is that they have to keep the inflation very low that is the major uh, mandate given to any central bank throughout the world inflation they have to keep it low similarly unemployment they have to keep it low these two are the main mandate of any central bank throughout the world. So now see unemployment started going up. The second is inflation. Inflation, the Fed target is 2%. Now it is, we are last print we got is was 3%. So they are expecting that it will gradually come to 2%. So the US Fed target for inflation is 2%. So US Fed, they have to maintain the inflation at 2%. That is the main target. Uh, two years back inflation almost eight went to more than eight percent around eight percent it was there for uh, more than six months so the fed target was two percent and uh, whereas the inflation was actual inflation was eight percent so that is the reason why us fed hiked the interest rate very drastically now inflation rate has come down so inflation rate within normal whereas the, the unemployment rate started going up so they, they have to bring that un unemployment level to lower levels so that is why they are telling that uh, that US Fed may cut interest rate. Suppose inflation is at 8% now means US Fed will not cut interest rate even though unemployment rate is high. So they have to keep the balance of both the unemployment rate and inflation rate. So most probably in September they will cut the rate and further rate cut will uh, possible depends upon the data they may cut 50% or 25% in November meeting. Unemployment employment data started showing weakness now. Oh. And, this, uh, and this is the data from 2000 and very interesting data this and all. If you see for Nifty 50 and Nifty 500 and number of days in a year with a decline of 1% or more. If you see in the last two years, it is one of the lowest volatility year. Previously we had in 2017. Is that also we had a very lowest volatility year where the number of uh, trading days in a year with a decline of 1% or more. So last year throughout full year just to 14 days only we had a decline of 1% or more. But if you see in 2003 to 7 where the index went up by 7 times average around 30 to 40 days were there where the index has declined more than 1%. So such a huge volatility at that time was there. Volatility started reducing and uh, during COVID time 41 days then uh, then, uh, then the next two years it was higher but 2023 if you see just 14 days was there in current year in the first six months just 10 days uh, of uh, trading days where a decline of 1% or more. So basically the volatility has come down a lot in the uh, stock market. Sir, but of this 10 and now wait and or not from on Sunday more. Uh, till June this has been taken. Similarly Nifty 500 if you see that that also the volatility has come down 10 to, to uh, last year just 10 days 
Nifty 500, which is uh, much, much lower in 2017 also 10 was there, which indicates that we haven't seen the volatility in stock market in the last two, three years. And most of the investors came post COVID only. If you see the number of DMAT account opening and um, new investors who came into stock market, actually they haven't seen the volatility of stock market yet. Previously, Mr. Sadish will be knowing it, how market used to be very volatile those days. One day will go up, one another day will come down. Like that it used to happen uh, in many days, many trading days in a year. But that volatility has been completely died down now. Results, uh, the Q1 results were very muted, subdued. And uh, even I, we, the results were indicating as if we are in a big recession. So one, one reason what most of the companies were telling is just that prolonged heat wave they are telling it. Because of huge uh, summer temperature, many people afraid of going out, going uh, out for tourism, even coming out of home, spending money. So that has led to the spending reduction by people. And election also there at that time. And election engagement, many people were engaged in elections. Uh, that also one of the re reasons told by many, many, many managements. And uh, another important thing is the government spending is very low during that uh, the last April, May, June period. And this time what happened was the election was more than one month. April to May it held. And uh, and that also uh, May to June. Uh, election April? Uh, April last to June. Uh, very prolonged election time this time. So that also one reason for the subdued Q1 uh, results. Uh, Q2 also won't be that much great. Because we, have, we are having a very good monsoon this time. So whenever monsoon is there, economy activity generally will be low. And only in the second half where festive season will start coming in, at that time only economy will pick up and we, uh, we can see the uh, impact on the company's uh, earning. Government spending also will go up very sharply. So we can expect results to improve. Uh, this, is the, this is also one reason. See, fiscal deficit has come down very sharply. Fiscal deficit is down means what government is not spending money. See, government got a very good revenue uh, when compared to last year, first quarter, April, May, June, if you see that, almost 40% revenue government has got it. Tax revenue up by 26%, non-tax revenue by 80%. Non-tax revenue is mainly boosted by this uh, RBI special dividend, uh, bumper dividend. Uh, and uh, overall revenue has gone up by 39%. Government revenue has gone up by 39%. Whereas expenditure, if you see when <coughs> compared to last year, it is down by 7%. So government has spent less money, whereas they have got more money in the first quarter, April, May, June. So uh, money, most of the money is in the hands of government now. So because of elections, they could not be able to spend it. Now, once the, now the elections are over now, most probably they, they would have started spending it and that will uh, come into the economy and it will take some time. Immediately it won't see show in the economic activity. We, we will, it will take at least three months to six months lag period to show in the economy and uh, most probably from third quarter onwards uh, results will start improving it. Fiscal deficit if you see last time it is what was 4.5 lakh crore and this time first quarter it is just 1.35 lakh crore almost 70 percent down so whenever there is a steep fall in fiscal deficit means government is not spending money means definitely it will show in the economy negatively geopolitical tension is increasing we all know that uh, in euro uh, in uh, israel they are having huge fight with all their neighbors and uh, uh, it will continue it won't end now and uh, we have to see whether the situation goes out of control or not that only time will tell and us they have increased its troop in gulf region for uh, for safety measures they have increased it uh, one important development <coughs> which has come in the last one month is the cb and the government they are continuously telling that in the, for the last few months they have been telling that many people are trading in the fundo basically the new entrants in the stock market first time investors and they are losing money so we want to curb some speculation happening in future and option. They want to, we want to curb it. We want to curb it. And they have been telling for the last three, four months, they have been telling 
now consultant consultant paper they have released it sebi has released it and most probably they may uh, uh, come out with the actual implementation two months or three months down the line so as per the consultation what they are going to do is that they are going to hike the minimum contract size to 20 to 30 lakhs in two stages they are going to hike the contract size of the uh, uh, future and option mainly in the consultant to consult paper what they are telling is the index only they are mentioning whether it, it will apply to stocks that we don't know but index only they are men mentioning in the uh, uh, consultant paper uh, uh, they are going to hike the contract size by 20 to 30 lakhs in two stages uh, they are going to hike right now it is around 5 5 5 lakhs it is there they are going to hike to 20 lakhs that means almost five times they are going to hike the contract size and then weekly in index products right now daily we are having NSE is uh, having almost uh, four weekly index products one is the bank nifty fin nifty then mid cap then nifty four weekly uh, uh, option products they are having they have to choose it only one we don't know what they will choose whether they will choose bank nifty or nifty uh, only NSE has to decide it and then that, that also they are going to rationalize and strikes also they have asked to reduce it and then options premium uh, investor has to pay upfront. Then uh, in intraday monitoring of push and limit is there. Then higher margin and removal of calendar benefit on the expiry day they have suggested, which means that we have to pay higher margins. Even if you have calendar spread, uh, you have to pay higher margins because the calendar spread won't be taken on expiry day. So these are some of the measures they have suggested in the consultant paper. And uh, yeah, August 20 is the last day to give our feedback. Most probably from August 20, they may take another 15 or 20 days, they may take. Most probably by September, uh, CB, uh, they will announce the, uh, the final changes and they will give another 30 days time. Most probably by October or November, uh, what are the steps they are going to be taken, it will be implemented. So once it, if consult, uh, consultation paper is implemented what will happen is that they are expecting option volume will come down that's what they are uh, uh, their main objective option volume should come down and the profitability of uh, brokers and stock exchanges will get affected because uh, <coughs> right now the discount brokers uh, all the new gen brokers they are getting most of their revenue only from options only that is why they are uh, uh, they may get affected similarly stock exchanges the nsc we will get affected more because of the measures they have taken and what they are now expecting is that some of the retail money which were playing in options market uh, uh, they may come into intraday cash market trading they may shift their strategy and they move into intraday cash market trading they may come that is what the expectation is there but we have to see what are the steps they are going to implement on government part <coughs> they have hide the, 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 the security transaction tax for derivatives. So th these are SEBI, SEBI steps. On government part, they have hiked the security transaction tax to discourage uh, higher trading. Generally, we are mainly focused on uh, cash markets, sir. Yeah, yeah, futures we have less only, options and less only. So in all this volatility, one <coughs> big positive which is happening, happening is the monsoon progress, which is a very positive. After many, many years, I am seeing this. So till yesterday, uh, monsoon, all India basis, it is 7% up. Central India, 19% up. Uh, Southern India, 25% up. Northwest and uh, East and Northeast, it is slightly less. Uh, in the next 10 days, 15 days, uh, uh, what IMD is forecasting is that Central India and Southern India will get less rainfall, but whereas this uh, Northwest and uh, North East India, they will get higher rainfall. That is what the uh, near term uh, forecast is there. So overall, throughout India, we will get a very good rainfall, which will uh, support the uh, agri sector and uh, and uh, overall uh, economy uh, down the line, not immediately, by six months, nine months down the line. So one uh, when in April when IMD gave forecast, uh, they they told they were expecting around six percent uh, above normal rainfall. They were expecting it. One reason why they were so positive about above normal rainfall is that La Nina will will come by 
August or September, that is what the expectation was. But now, uh, globally, most of the weather, weather model agencies, they are telling that La Nina will get delayed. Most probably, it will, it will come by October, November only, they are expecting, not by August or September. Uh, but in spite of that, we till now, we have got a good rainfall. For August and September, uh, IMD has forecasted that August will see normal rainfall whereas September will see above normal rainfall. That is the forecast by IMD. That means overall remaining period also we will get a good rainfall and this time uh, definitely it will be around 5% uh, above average rainfall we will have it. And that is why if you see some other stocks which are related to agri companies, they have started going up. One company which we recommended last time insecticide. It has done very well, uh, around 720 range only we recommended. Yesterday closing was 920 and we expect it the price will cross 1000 soon. Even next week the price can go above 1000. So like that many agri related companies are going up. The, that is why this time also we have recommended a Japanese company Sumitomo Chemicals which has been in uh, agri crop protection side. Uh, so monsoon is good means basically consumption will go up and uh, that will be positive for them. Uh, uh, mutual funds, uh, very good inflow we are getting it and uh, large cap funds if you see it will be interesting to see that large cap funds get less flow. In the last two, two years market has been going up but uh, which sector, uh, which category if you see going up, <coughs> mid cap and small cap, large cap has been lagging it. One of the reason why the large cap has been lagging is the, the amount the mutual fund getting in large cap money is less. So basically liquidity is mainly coming from in the mid and small cap category only. There are many PMSRs there, uh, then uh, uh, alternate uh, 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 investment funds are there. They all are concentrated mainly in uh, mid and small cap only. So most of the liquidity coming into mid and small cap category only. and. Uh, that's why <coughs> mid and small cap has been doing very well in the last 2-3 years because liquidity is there in mid and small cap whereas large cap if you see the investment has been very less and this is the active mutual fund net flows. If you see this is the uh, large cap category, uh, this brown color, this one is the large cap category. It has got very very less 6300 uh, crores it has got it whereas the other two category if you see sectorial thematic fund. They have got huge money, so part of the sectorial thematic funds will go into large cap also. Whereas the small and mid cap funds, SMID funds, they have got almost four times of uh, large cap funds in the in the current year. Uh, last year also, if you see, actually large cap funds has saw out, uh, outflow, whereas small and mid cap got huge inflows. So, uh, yeah, yes. So basically. Basically, if you see that uh, money has been coming mainly into mid and small cap uh, funds, that is why they are doing very well. Yeah. And last month also the inflow has been very strong, 37,000 crores inflow is there. Previously we have 40,000 but still last 2-3 months we have got huge inflow of above uh, 30,000. And SIP flows, it has been going up. So SIP flows, this is the gross flow, 23,000 crores is the gross flow. There has been some uh, redemption also there, but overall the gross flows has been continuously going up. Foreign flow, it is very less only, 1.2 billion we have got it, whereas the mutual fund flows are extremely strong. So debt has to watch Q1 results by 15th, all the results would have come in. The monsoon progress is very good. Then what I am expecting now is that government will start uh, uh, the individual ministries. They will uh, they, they will start uh, focusing on the action plan of the government. The 100 days action plan has been given to almost all major ministries. One by one we will start getting it. Yesterday, uh, yesterday, 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 uh, cabinet has approved uh, three major changes. Uh, three major announcement, one is on the railway sector, second one is on the housing sector, they have announced it, the third one is on the logistic sector. So my expectation is that in coming uh, uh, next to 30 days, 60 days, we are going to see huge announcements by the government. 
that may give some uh, markets that may improve the market sentiments and us elections are in uh, election progress we have to see it right now trump is there <coughs> then kamala harris is there and who is going to win that also we will get some idea in coming days and global market some volatility was there now global market volatility has stabilized it so a lot of uh, events to watch in coming months thank you